In this video, I'd like to talk about the concept of simplifying fractions. So we can start with this example, 2 fourths, or 2 divided by 4, and we can ask if we can write this in a simpler way. And so basically what you have to do is ask yourself if there are any whole numbers that divide evenly into both the numerator and the denominator. And in this case, since both of these are even numbers, they're both divisible by 2. And so at this point, we can actually just divide each the numerator and the denominator by 2. And we can do this because, in effect, we're dividing by 2 over 2, which is just 1. Anything divided by itself is just 1. And you can always multiply or divide a number, like let's say 4, by 1, and it doesn't change the value. And this is true of any number. You can multiply or divide it by 1, and it won't change the value. So in essence, since we're just dividing by 1, we're not changing the value of this fraction. So when we divide the top by 2, 2 divided by 2 we know is 1, and in the denominator, 4 divided by 2 is just 2. So 2 fourths and 1 half are equivalent to each other. And if we sketch quick pictures of these, you can see that it's visually true. And you can see in this top picture that we have this rectangle where we cut it into four equally sized pieces, all these pieces separated by green lines. And the numerator tells us how many of those we have. So we have two of these four pieces. And in this bottom picture, we again start with one whole rectangle. And the denominator tells us we cut it into two equally sized pieces separated by this reddish orange line here. And the numerator again tells us how many of those ha that we have. But you can see very clearly that they are the same. That the portion of the rectangle shaded yellow is the same in both of these. And that's because two fourths and one half are equivalent to each other. And you could go even further and show that this is also equal to 3 sixths or 4 eighths, or you can keep going past that, because all of these fractions simplify to 1 half. And like I said, you can see this visually. So let me essentially show you what 3 sixths and 4 eighths would look like as well. And you can see here that this rectangle is representative of the fraction 3 sixths, since due to the denominator being 6, we cut the entire rectangle into six equal pieces, and then we actually have three of them, so that's why three are shaded in yellow. And below that, you can see the fraction four divided by eight, where again, because the denominator is eight, we cut it into eight equal pieces. And since the numerator is four, we would shade in four of these as yellow. And what you can see is that for the fraction two fourths, one half, 3 6 and 4 8 that they're all equivalent to each other. That compared to the entire rectangle, that exactly half of it is shaded in in each of these. So let's now look at a few different examples of how to actually simplify these fractions. So let's say we have 30 divided by 40. And with all of these problems, you essentially just want to find the biggest number that divides evenly into both of these. And if you can't find the biggest number, you can always just start with some number that divides into both of these. But since these both end in a 0, that means they're each divisible by 10. So we can actually divide each of them by 10. And remember that we're essentially just dividing by 1, so we're not changing the value of the number. 30 divided by 10 would be 3, and 40 divided by 10 would be 4. And you can always tell you're done if you have at least one prime number, so that would be 3 in this case, since it's only divisible by itself in 1. And that prime number, if it doesn't go in to the other, either the numerator or denominator, then you can tell that this is fully simplified. And since 3 does not divide into 4, you can't simplify this any further. So this would be fully simplified from 30 over 40. Now let's use another example. Let's say we have 18 over 50. And looking at this one, you can see that each of these numbers is an even number. So we can divide them each by 2. And in effect, we're just dividing by 1 here. 
18 divided by 2 would be 9. 50 divided by 2 would be 25. And at this point, we can stop since this is fully simplified. Since 9 is a product of 3 and 3, and 25 is a product of 5 and 5, and we can't make any cancellations here. So 9 25ths is as simple as we can make this. So let's keep going. We can do a few more examples. Let's say we have the fraction 33 divided by 88. And what I would recommend doing, if you're not sure which numbers divide into this, is to essentially just go through the list of prime numbers. So remember, prime numbers are just numbers that are only divisible by themselves and 1. So prime numbers start at the number 2, then go to 3. 4 would not be included since 4 is divisible by 2. Then we go to 5. 6 is divisible by 2 and 3, so we skip it. Then 7. 8 is divisible by 2. 9 divisible by 3. 10 is divisible by 5 and 2. And then you go to 11. 12 is an even number, 13, and then the next one would be 17, 19, and so on. Usually you don't need to use numbers this high up, but it is helpful to know the prime numbers. And so we can just start going through the list here. 2 only goes into 88, it doesn't go into 33. And then to tell if something's divisible by 3, you essentially just add the digits. So for 33, you add 3 and 3, which is equal to 6. And if the sum of those digits is a number that's divisible by 3, and in this case it is, then the original number is divisible by 3. So 33 divided by 3 is just 11. Now, if we did it for 88, though, 8 plus 8 is 16, and 16 is not divisible by 3. And actually, you can keep doing it. If you're not sure about 16, 16 is just 1 plus 6, which is 7. And 7 is not divisible by 3, so 16 is not. And since 16 is not, 88 is not. So 2 didn't work, 3 didn't work. For a number to be divisible by 5, it would have to end in a 5 or a 0, which neither of these do. So then we go to 7. Now 7 has a strange divisibility rule where you can double the last digit and then subtract it from the rest of the digits. So for something like 154, you would double... 4 and make it 8 and then subtract 15 minus 8 which is 7 and if this difference is divisible by 7 then the entire number is so 7 would go into 154 but for something like 33 we would double the last digit make it 6 subtract that from 3 you get negative 3 but negative 3 is not divisible by 7 and when you do it with 88 you double 8 you get 16 8 minus 16 is negative 8 so neither of these are divisible by 7. So we can move past that. And now we're checking if 11 goes into it. And at least for 11 times any single digit number, it's always just that number repeated. So 11, 22, 33, 44, all the way down to 88 and 99. So in this case, both of these are divisible by 11. And so we can just divide them by 11. And what you get is 3 divided by 8, and 3 is a prime number. So we can check, does 3 go into the bottom number? And 3 does not go into 8, since 8 is only divisible by 2. So 3 eighths is as simplified as we can make this. And let's do one more example. And let's say we have 80 divided by 16. And as I said above, if you don't know the biggest number that divides into both of these, you can just use the smallest number or any number that you can think of that goes into both. And since both of these are even numbers, we can just divide them each by 2. And we will get 40 for the numerator and 8 for the denominator. And since both of these are still even numbers, we can just continue the process. Divide them each by 2. And in this case, you get 20 over 4. And these are still divisible by 2. Actually, we can divide them each by 4. Or you can actually just calculate this division here. So 20 divided by 4 is simply equal to 5. But if you kept simplifying fractions, you'd find the same result. You can divide them each by 4, since that's the biggest number that goes into both of them. And you'd end up with 5 over 1, which is just 5. 